Awesome. All right. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for coming this afternoon. So this is quite exciting and a proud moment for Fusion because this is our second AGM. So Fusion is two. Um, and yeah, so actually, does someone mind sharing the slides? Oh, and are you able to do that? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I haven't got all my set up today. It would be difficult. Um, Michael, see. are you able to? I can probably sort something out here. One sec. Thanks. Yes, sir. I'm trying to multitask. <laughs> so, hi. I love your outfit, by the way. Where, where do you find Thank it? Thank you. What do you mean? <laughs> Oh, I, I it, it, it looks it looks different. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Cool. And so, what we'll go through today are um, a few statements. So we'll have financial statement. We'll have to confirm the minutes from the last AGM. Go through a few speeches from our officers. Then we will explore some constitutional amendments that have been proposed. Um, and then we'll go into the executive committee nominations and their pitches, so that'll be really exciting. All right, so now we're just at confirmation of minutes. So we had a PDF of this attached to the agenda um, in the invites and on our website. Let's just have a motion that we uh, accept those minutes. Can I just ask before we formalize that, have we actually um, met quorum yet? Can anyone confirm before we actually do a motion? We, uh, I believe quorum is about 80 people. Mm. So unless we have 40 proxies, which I doubt, we do not, uh, we would not have quorum. Okay. Let's check the proxies. Oh, yes. Uh, it's only uh, seven people proxy. Okay. All right. So we haven't met quorum. I guess, don't we sort of have to continue anyway? I mean, the... yes. Yeah, what, what's um, I know this happened last year as well, so we didn't meet quorum in the uh, original AGM, so there was um, some sort of workaround for that. Anyone who's well-versed with the Constitution mind just reminding us what we do there? Didn't we just ask people to support it later on? So there was the recording, we sent out the motions and members gave their support, their A's or not? Yes. So as, as this is a general meeting, we can proceed as uh, if we had quorum, uh, but then we have to uh, specify a date not more than 21 days after this to have everything resolved by with appropriate levels of support. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, happy to work with that. So yeah, we'll just move this to email then. All right, next slide. Great, financial statements with Michael. Okay, um, going through things uh, relatively quick. Um, the, uh, my notes gone, cool. Um, so uh, the profit and loss for the end of the financial year. Um, so this will be obviously an amalgamation of all of the, the sort of the monthly profit and loss reports I've given at the, the monthly meetings. Um, there are some, see, so this is up to the end of the financial year. So end of June, 2023. Um, and so just running through things, uh, directly. So, uh, over the course of the year, uh, just over 10,000 in donations of 10,655, um, there's a slight item there of uh, expense contributions, which is just effectively a correction from um, some previous uh, some previous year's expenses. So um, some returning of funds uh, overpaid uh, from the previous uh, federal election. Uh, and the rest is a combina is mostly uh, monetary donations that have been sent through to the party by both either as sort of monthly or once off. I'll provide some more details on that uh, shortly. Um, but I'll just run through the expenses generally. Now I've got a um, uh, just a, quick, a slightly visualized breakdown of this afterwards, but um, just a, a few points on this list um, where our total is 22,387. Now, <clears throat> one of the major um, aspects of this is uh, the IT services and subscriptions line there, uh, fourth from the top um, of um, 
just over 10,000, or oh, sorry, oh, just under 11,000. Um, this uh, pr predominantly is, yeah, is always our sort of a biggest expense. It actually this time though includes uh, two separate years of nation builder subscription. Um, so it's we pay it an annual subscription, but both payments fell into this year. So that's um, there's approximately four or 5,000 of that that is um, of the, that is just the nation builder uh, subscription. Um, some other notable expenses in there are uh, G Suite or our Google stuff, which is handles uh, internal emails and our document sharing. Um, the costs of that have been sort of greatly reduced in the recent months, so that's um, that's that's sort of we're, we're cutting those th those costs down. Um, and then there are a few other sort of smaller things like Zero for accounting for generating these reports and uh, the Zoom account, uh, we all, which we also pay annually for. Um, uh, the things, some items around administration fees. This is predominantly uh, candidate registration fees. So this is Owen uh, Owen's fees in the Aston by-election, as well as some partial contributions to the Victorian state candidate registration fees um, in the in sort of uh, end of twenty twenty two. There is also numerous fees paid to Consumer Affairs Victoria for reporting and constitutional updates. Um, so then there's a couple items around printing and advertising. Uh, that's almost, I think that's almost completely um, the Aston by-election. And then some notes around uh, merchandise of sort of t-shirts, stickers, and uh, some costs from the event that we ran at the uh, Sydney Gay Lesbian Mardi Gras uh, Fair Day store. Um, there is another what well, the other larger one there, which is member and external communications. That's the cost predominantly of click send, which was used for uh, sending SMSs during the um, various the audit, checks yeah. um, the, the, during the yes, the AEC audit. Um, so um, that's the uh, so that's the breakdown now just. Quick back back to donations really quickly. Um, just a quick run on um, sort of just a monthly breakdown of, of donations as they came through. Um, so uh, we've generally had a, a relatively steady sort of three to four hundred of monthly donations um, at at sort of from from a month to month, which is it's great to know sort of what we sort of at least a baseline of what we should be getting. Uh, and then we've had a few spikes in in some months. Um, the biggest one being in in March. Um, 2023, which was, of course, the Aston by-election. So um, obviously a lot more activity there. Uh, November, the other, which is was another one where we did have a so November, December, where we um, did send an email out just as a end of calendar year, a uh, bit of a donation drive. And then end of financial year in June, obviously um, uh, encouraging people to claim those uh, the, those tax deductions on those donations. So um, just yeah, a few spikes there um, and just, yeah, just have a breakdown of where those came in. Um, and then just on the expenses, uh, just a visualization of, of effectively what I explained before. So the majority of those fees coming out into the um, uh, majority of those expenses being in that sort of uh, nation builder and Google um, side of things. And then a sort of a, a smaller breakdown of, of some of those other things. I'll just linger on there for a moment um, as we are, uh, as, as I go through the next, my next notes, but um, um, the sort of major takeaways on the sort of the profit and loss, um, we are managing our ongoing costs, um, keeping up with the AEC requirements though is sort of very resource intensive, both in uh, time and, and um, human resources. And also elections and sort of are and should be the most financially active. So we should be aiming to build up our assets in preparation for subsequent elections. And we also want to be making sure we're making a greater effort to spend more efficiently during campaigns. Um, so uh, just finally on the balance sheet, um, this is at the end of the financial year. So the, there's been some later reports that have this differently, but just ending our um our total on uh, total assets at the end of that financial year. It's a bunch of um, liabilities. Uh, that is just sort of this was re reimbursements, which is sort of currently in progress at the time. Um, but our net asset sitting at just over three thousand dollars on three thousand one hundred eighty-seven and three cents. Um, now I did just I had 
um, provided those more recent ones. So just um, the, the more recent balance sheet is here, which just sort of does show that our accounts are slowly climbing up again with that balance of uh, 35, 32, 66. Um, so, uh, that is effectively my report. Um, I see there's a lot of questions in the chat that have come through that I've not been able to um, uh, see till this time. So I'll have a quick look, but if anyone wants to point out any uh, specific ones. Most of it was discussion on that quorum point. Yep. Uh, there was uh, one comment from Alexander asking, or saying, uh, would recommend breaking out candidate fees from other admin overheads in future one scales, the other doesn't. And, yeah. uh, Brian also noted, hopefully there is an alternative to Nation Builder. Oh, I'll cover that later, actually. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I can I can speak to both of those. Yeah, definitely, um, Alex, the, um, the, there's more breakdown or there's more detail that could be put into these reports or, like, they could be split out uh, differently for sure. Um, this, this is... Um, Kind of yeah, I've I've I did a little bit of cleanup and consolidated a couple of things because um over the last little bit because there were a th few things um sort of uh split up separately where they shouldn't be and things like that. But uh yeah, if 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 there are any um additional details or, or requests um things that people anyone would would like to know about um please request it and I'll um I'll I'll, I'll endeavor to get that to you. Um but yes, we should certainly be um getting uh. Yeah, there's there's all sorts of um, from from the perspective of budgeting and analysis and things, we can we can definitely break these down more. Um, and then yes, on Nation Builder, that's a it's a discussion. I think Owen has some comments about it later, but um, it is a discussion that has happened sort of ongoing for years. Um, there's uh, it would be nice to replace it, but it does it does do a lot of different things for us that um, are very valuable. So um, we don't want to necessarily uh, uh, to, uh take that for granted um miles you have your hand raised liam has identified from the constitution that we're required to adjourn the, adjourn the meeting uh, yeah, 30 minutes in we, we've still got another 13 minutes yeah thanks yeah we'll wait i don't think we'll meet quorum but let's just carry on <laughs> Yeah, we can't vote on anything, but we can still go through the business. It can be recorded. Uh, and I mean, if we, if people wanted to end up sticking around and doing their candidate speeches and recording that, I don't think anyone would have a, a problem with that too, um, because we don't know when we're going to have to reschedule for yet. And it might be better to do that now and have some people around who can ask questions uh, in case you can't be around for when the rescheduled one would be either like later this month or well it has to be later this month doesn't it, it has to be within 21 days mm. so what we could do is we'll wait until 4 30 um see if there's going to be quorum there won't be quorum um and we'll reschedule this for potentially next sunday um and when we reschedule it we won't have to have quorum we can just proceed um as normal um, oh, it, it's it's at the real. But um, guys, I, I'm keen. What Brian was suggesting before, I reckon everyone's keen for the meeting now. We're all organised. I reckon let's proceed, and we can do some sort of satisfying thing later to say that yeah. you know we we did have a meeting. You know, yeah. Uh, what do you call it? Like an asynchronous, decentralised meeting later. If everybody just clicks a button, I reckon. I, I think it's in the spirit. Yeah, the and I think you know we had at the we had advertised this day for a while, so you know, people should be prepared to come and pitch. I think if we make it next Sunday. Um, so yeah, all right, let's just proceed with the usual items and then we'll have another meeting to vote on things. Cool, all right. Happy with that? Yep, I don't think there's any issues. If we're making the, like, if the actual votes don't happen here, then constitutionally there shouldn't be a problem uh, it, it's it's effectively like uh well uh, us voting on like approving the minutes from the past meeting so, so long as everyone's provided with the information before the next meeting to review and then vote on that's not a problem yeah and plus yeah we're all here let's just move with the energy all right so thank you michael next slide 
report, officer report. So Owen. Oh yeah, thanks team. Um, so yeah, as Michael alluded to before, um, uh, oh, so I meant to say um, going through the audit this year um, as registered officer, yeah, it ended up being a, a fair bit of work. The main challenge was that, um, you know, lots of people's addresses are not exactly correct. And, um, you know, if we're going to submit uh, all these people to the, the electoral commission, um, so they have a website where like I can type people's details in and see if they match. And um, Michael, I, th I don't know if you wrote it, or at least you provided me with um, a web scraper to submit details into that, check if people's addresses are correct. Um, but yeah, with all these mismatches, um, it ended up being, yeah, like days and days of work, um, checking all these details and, you know, messaging people, sorry if it came across as spammy, um, you know, had to make sure that we passed. And, you know, to put it into some perspective, all these other parties, you know, Reason, Democrats, they're being deregistered at the moment. So the fact that we passed the order, it's a non-trivial achievement for us. Um, but then as well, you know, like during that, um, like I'm a software engineer, I could see that like, why am I typing this all by hand? And so I'm, I'm currently working on some new software to replace Nation Builder. I'm calling it Underground CRM, uh, Customer Relationship Management. And yeah, like speaking with all these different grassroots organizations, you know, they have a need for it as well. Um, the idea being, um, oh, I, I can give you guys a tech demo soon. I was making good progress yesterday. But yeah, so look forward to this. Um, I aim that like next year we'll switch over away from Nation Builder onto Underground CRM. And um, yeah, like if we can grow it to other organizations as well, it becomes so much more feasible for us to, I guess, you know, I won't be the only one writing it, so it's easier to, to maintain. Um, yeah, that's uh, all I had to say is registered officer uh, and nothing as secretary. Yeah. Thank you, Owen. Yeah, have to just reinforce that. That was an awesome feat um, with the AEC audit. We had so many drawbacks and, you know, the AEC had a couple of, you know, lags because of the other elections that came up. Um, and so Owen, Miles, Alex Valentine, anyone else we want to shout out and acknowledge? For helping it was out? a serious effort. Thanks a lot for putting it in, especially the, the phone calls and all that. Um, it also, I guess, yeah, unearthed some... Uh, <laughs> some curiosities but, uh, let's not dwell on that <laughs> yeah good cleaning of the database so that's cool especially since there's been news of um other you know comparable parties that haven't been passing the aec audit so uh there's a lot shifting in ospol at the moment and fusion stood strong so i think that's nothing to sniff at it's a good feat so well done everyone um for engagement chair uh so I just want to congratulate um, Miles for putting in so much effort and work into um, engagement. Um, I can see there have been some volunteer induction and state coordinator meetings, and we've um, brought Chris Juba on as well to do a lot of phone banking as well. Um, Miles, I haven't been to those meetings, so is there anyone you want to shout out and uh, acknowledge for helping out? We've had a number of volunteers sign up and go through the induction process and have jumped in and, and contributed in a variety of areas. There's uh, a whole number of volunteers I could name. So it's um, probably simpler if we just say on bank that uh, well done and thank you to everyone who has contributed to Fusion this year. Um, probably a little bit too many to name, but I do want to shout out to the uh, state coordinators who've stepped up or and local organizers have stepped up to uh, start kicking off local activity. I think that's where the future of the party lies. I'm really excited to um, to see that initiative come together. I'm hoping that more people will get involved in that initiative and uh, and and step up there. Yeah, for sure. Um, Fusion's really been growing uh, and finding its identity. And so with that, we've been having our Triple M meetings. So they're the monthly uh, member meetings. Uh, and so with those, we do our usual reporting of transparency, sorry, transparency reporting of uh, finances and things like that. But we also have a, a topic that we like to talk about. So uh, just, you know, thanking Owen and Austin for contributing to those and presenting and Bryony as well. So thank you for that. I um, want to see the, the transparency really one. I'm very keen. The, the yeah. transparency, you're very yes. keen, yeah. <laughs> uh, transparency. The, 
Thank you. Yeah, transparency is a passion focus for me. So I'll talk about that later in the AGM. But um, yeah, so I think with engagement, it's really important to build community. It's what makes us um, robust and powerful and allows us to uh, better organize and send um, effective messages out to the community. So everyone who's been helping out with engagement, thank you very much. Uh, now, Michael. Thank you again. Um, so yeah, on the on the policy front, um, the Policy Development Committee, committee um, PDC, was formed earlier this calendar year uh, with uh, sort of based on the terms of reference provided by the EC. Uh, the primary objective was to facilitate a process for expanding and enhancing the policy platform. So we first spent some time working out the processes and requirements that were intended to provide sort of a minimum level of standard, uh, like evidence standard and consistency to our policy positions and the way that we present them. Um, the, this resulted in an operations manual that had good content, uh, but in practice has ended up being a little bit unwieldy. Um, about six months ago, we picked up, uh, we picked the housing policy to be the first major focus for policy development and invited the membership to contribute both offline and in a fortnightly development workshop. Uh, there have also been a number of small projects that have been working on, that we've been working on, including position statements for current events, like the voice referendum, and various submissions to topics such as the recent middle arm development precinct. Uh, the process for housing um, and sort of long form development in general, uh, we set out uh, was to first sort of get on the same page with problem identification, lots of research into the history and dynamics of the housing situation, and then to identify what outcomes we agree on. Uh, and that that policy should aim for. So trying to make sure that people are on the same page for uh, the discussions that have become about policy. Um, the final step there is the actual detail of the policy proposals, which we are still in now. So we had a number of develop, uh, members jump on and provide some great contributions. Um, we've also had some setbacks uh, of just sort of people being able to sort of having a bit of time or, and um, the, Sort of a strong realization that this is work that requires a lot of dedicated uh, attention um, and we do generally especially as a member volunteer based member organization um, we do just have limited resources so the progress has been slower than we had hoped it to be um, we are making progress still and we are still hoping to get uh, a solid uh, detailed housing policy out uh, very, very soon, um, ideally within the next couple of months. Um, so with this, the there are also, um, we, we want to make sure we get sort of other policy work streams going, through, going out. There have been lots of different comments about uh, different policies that, um, the, that members think that Fusion should be getting behind and, and developing. So this includes things around AI and technology. Uh, there were some recent things about expanding our um, education policy. Uh, and there's just all, all sorts of things that people are interested in and, and find important. So we do want to make sure that you can uh, sort of get involved with this. Uh, if, you, if there is something that you do want to spend time with, you, you want to spend time on and you think you are able to uh, contribute to something like this, please let us know. Um, we will continue to try to make this more inclusive where we can. Uh, but uh, yeah, we, need, we need people to jump in and... and uh, on the ground, getting this getting this work done of, of the research and doing the writing and uh, making sure that this this policy is is up to date and uh, useful and and uh, attractive to voters and uh, for candidates to be able to use during campaigns. So uh, there's still tons of work to be done, uh, and yeah, we definitely need you. So uh, so uh, yeah, get in touch and jump aboard. Okay, so. We have an opportunity to vote on some constitutional amendments. We can't vote on them today, but um, we can just discuss them or introduce the motions, um, and then we can address this in the next meeting, in our follow-up meeting. So uh, we've got here for the amendments version 2.0. Uh, this had some edits with uh, initiated by Andrea Leong, and I added a few as well. 
Uh, so these are all attached to emails and they are also on our website for access. Um, yeah, has uh, everyone had an opportunity to look at those? Uh, there was a question in the chat, by the way, uh, by what I'm guessing is a guest asking, uh, how can people involve for policies? If, uh, uh, yeah, thanks. I, 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 was, I was just going to type on that one. Um, to not interrupt, but um, so we do have the uh, policy intake form that is uh, uh, can be can be found on the website. And we still need to get, sort of get a bit better at um, managing that. Um, that we don't get a whole lot in there, uh, but that there's that's the way you can submit individual uh, particular things. Those go into a register that that um, that is saved. Uh, you can also email us at policy at fusionparty.org.au. That goes to the entire PDC and will generally be responded to. Uh, I'll put that in the, the chat as well. And also I see Drew has his hand up. Yeah, um, as we are now formally uh, beyond the quorum testing period, uh, perhaps the better question to ask here is whether there's anyone who would like to speak to the matter of these particular resolutions while we're recording. I can uh, speak to my V3, but I think it's um, fair to offer Andrea the chance to speak first, Andrea and Saha. Um, yeah, so I haven't been active in the fusion leadership, obviously, for a little while, um, but I did, I did propose some amendments before. Am I mm -hmm. echoing? Hmm. You are echoing, yes. I'll go on mute. I think it might have been Brendan's. It was lighting up. Uh, yes. So I've um I proposed some amendments that uh, some of them were um, fixes of errors in numbering and things like that, and some were um, looking to change a few things about the way that the party actually operates. Um, I, what would those be? Sorry, I'm just scrolling through. Um, but obviously the main, the biggest change that I proposed was to remove the branches as a formal element of the fusion party. So the, the founding branches and that is in line with what I had always thought that the fusion party was, that it was going to be a merger of organisations and people can maintain their identities as an informal organisation and organise however they like. But the science party always thought that we were going to wind down as part of the merger. Um, I think maybe I'll see if Saha has anything to say before we invite questions about it yeah thank you yeah so i think the main thing we were cleaning up with the constitution is um, because we haven't really clearly defined um removing uh redundant detail about the branches but still maintaining that the branches can have representative involvement with um the executive committees so we still have the rep um, nominated for the exec um, and yeah and just cleaning up the roles so getting rid of some of the roles that really didn't really belong in exec to make the exec smaller and more efficient I think that's the main the main bulk there yes Brian has a question what's the reason for merging well um, there were a few motivations so there was the party registration integrity um, Act, which came in um, late oh. 2021. Um, and so that really was a bit of a threat to the minor parties because it, it uh, elevated the need for membership, saying, you know, instead of 500, you needed 1,000 for the fusion that uh, so we have here science, pirates, secular, vote, planet, climate change, justice. We're all very aligned in our values and our goals. Um, so yeah, we we passed that and we were able to campaign in the federal election. So that was excellent. Um, 
But this is something I was going to touch in my president's speech, just about fusion. I mean, fusion's in its teenage years now. We're, you know, finding our identity. We're past the the growth spurt, um, and now now the dust that's the, the sorry now that the dust has settled, uh, we have some time to just really discuss what our identity is and how we walk in the future. So that's the reason why these um, amendments are coming in because the constitution was. Uh, just very practical at the time, but now we're refining it, cleaning it up. Uh, Brian says, would this affect the independence of each micro parties? Uh, any thoughts on that, Andrea? I'm happy to speak, but yeah. Yeah, I'd have to ask which micro parties are being referred to there and also what independence means. Sorry to go Jordan Peterson on that, <laughs> but um, yeah. What is meant there by independence and micro parties? Is that fusion? Because maybe it refers to the branches, but the branches are no longer registered parties. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, sorry, I'm not sure how to answer that question. Yeah, I think it. Um independence of each micro parties i mean we're not forcing anyone to join fusion i think the motivation to be part of fusion is sharing resources collaborating um having a, a stronger movement and so we we only really absorb parties that are well aligned with us um not sure yeah i don't know i would like to discuss what you mean brian but just not sure what you mean oh, um so hard to add to your point about maintaining independence. Keep in mind, there are, um, we mentioned before that some of them are being deregistered, you know, the Democrats, the um, reason. But there are still other parties. I mean, today, for instance, I was meeting with um, Sustainable Australia. You know, they care about climate. You know, Briony is organising the Climate Accords. Um, you know, it is, it is totally possible to maintain an identity that overlaps a lot with fusion. We're definitely not forcing people into belief yeah yeah well uh to brian's questions do those does the party have to be registered so no um some of the parties weren't registered when they joined with fusion um i think at the moment the constitution says they need to have 50 members to be considered and how uh, membership is yeah with pirates there's formal requirements for the branches to have a minimum membership. And um, so on to, yeah, that question. Yes. So does a party have to be registered to be considered a party? I guess that's, it's kind of, for what purpose are they considered a party? They're an organisation if they run themselves like an organisation, but they can't run candidates that people can vote for under that name. Under my, mm. under my set of amendments, I've uh, actually addressed a lot of those criticisms. So, for example, um, one of the one of the changes I make is to rename branches to member organisations to clarify that they are an organisation of members. And so there's no implication there, formal or otherwise, about their status. And this has the nice sort of um, potential to open us up for... Um, being more encouraging and supportive of members within fusion to band together around specific interests or for interest groups outside of fusion which are or have been non-electoral to consider a closer role in um, contributing to fusion for ones that that do align with our movement and philosophy i think um as well the question of independence is um fusion doesn't really have that authority to tell what the other micro parties are doing so you know with fusion i'm not telling whoever owns the pirates twitter what they can and cannot post like they are maintaining their independence there and same with science and same with secular um and it would be just like in any other organization so like, let's say we have a candidate running in the election they themselves are independent but they are acting under the fusion banner and the fusion values and the fusion policies but if that candidate uh you know acts um in uh contradiction to what fusion stands for then that's where the independence would would uh, be the barrier and i think that's that's quite reasonable i mean i'm just thinking like if secular started to go fascist or something you know 
fusion would be saying, well, we don't want to associate with that micro party. But so they have the independence and the freedom to be as they are. But if they start to fall away from fusion and what fusion stands for, then we really can't be aligned with them anymore, if that helps. All we have is collective identity, though, that uh, those different parties, while they or, or different member organizations, while they operate separately, we all still have the goal of furthering and contributing to fusion. And so that kind of goes both ways in that uh, all the orgs have an obligation to fusion as well um, through through their culture and their communities. And so, um, you know, we've all been doing that, going back to our communities to to advocate for fusion and uh, and to bring members and volunteers over to support the activities and the election campaigns. And similarly as well, that, um, you know, any member organizations or branches which feel like they've served their purpose and um, and want to unwind or wind up rather and cease activities or, or, or cease their community or identity, then that's, you know, that's their right. And that's that's separate from what Fusion is and uh, what fusion should be. Yeah, um, I think it's more of a campaign strategy because, you know, from the campaigners or the candidates that were out on the ground speaking to our voters, um, that was a question that would come up. And it, it was really good to have pirates on the poster because that became a bit of an icebreaker. People would say, is that pirates? And we'd you know start to talk about how we've formed and made fusion, but it's been something that's, been important that we need to have our message very clear and consistent um and so that's why with the constitutional amendments it's more about a strategy that we want to have a very solid identity people are not comfortable with um just the complexity as we noticed with the referendum people go oh i don't understand i'm going to vote no so as soon as we start to um introduce ambiguity and that kind of question of do all the micro parties have independence? I mean, if they had full independence and they weren't um, following the fusion party line and fusion values and things like that, then they wouldn't know who they're actually voting for. If they vote for fusion, they're voting for a word salad. Thanks, Anthony Green. So yeah, I think that's what we need to clarify. It's not a, a cultural thing. Fusion isn't um, trying to impose and, and erase culture. It's more about we want to simplify operations and we want to make our identity and brand very clear and simple to the public. I'm actually really curious about what the tangible benefits of the branch structure have been. And with new members signing up and especially active volunteers, like the ones who have been making phone calls, I think, do they belong to branches and has been have has it been part of the engagement structure to talk about the branches otherwise it doesn't seem that branches are necessary for engagement good point because we have moved to um state-based branches rather than um micro party branches and i've noticed as well with um our candidate nominations we haven't specified if they've come from a particular branch so if we yeah i mean it's it's all based on culture and it's all based on how we want to represent our identity if we want to acknowledge branches and i think we'd have to even acknowledge branches for all of our candidates and then saha you're just dropping out there yeah while we get saha back online i'll just mention I that i hope i came just missed the last 30 seconds i think saha Oh, hey, sorry. I don't know what I missed, but I was just saying that um, we just want to have clarity and consistency and simplicity with our brand and image. And um, like Andrea was saying, we haven't really been acknowledging where our volunteers have come from, if they're aligned or tied to a branch. It's fine if they are, but we just really haven't been referring to them and managing them in that way. Um, and I just also noticed with our candidate nominations for the executive, we haven't really acknowledged the branches that they have come from. And I just wonder if that is significant if we are talking about branch identity within Fusion. And also not being mentioned in the constitution, if we were to remove formal branch requirements from the constitution, doesn't stop any groups from running 
within or outside of fusion. Yet it doesn't erase anything. The um, argument for simplicity seems like a really, really strange one that um, people find it, the idea of a coalition confusing because one of the two major parties in Australia has been a coalition for 50, 60 years. And uh, that seems fairly straightforward that, that people can accept the or understand and accept the idea that <clears throat> multiple, in the case of the Liberal National Party, multiple parties can join together, campaign together and and support each other philosophically and electorally and logistically. And so what we're doing is the same, really. And uh, all the volunteers that I've spoken to and worked with have been comfortable, have, have seemed comfortable and open to speak to that, that uh, it's a really common trend, Saha, like you identified that um, in, in, in elections, people will see all the names and be like, oh, what's this or what's that? And uh, volunteers, a lot of the time, will make a point about um, if, if they if they do come from a previous party, uh, like like secular, science, pirate, etc., then quite often they'll start those conversations by saying, "I come from this party, and this is why I joined, and this is why, why what I do in fusion, how I support it, and and how we kind of have that that overlap." I don't think people do understand the coalition. I don't think people understand necessarily if it's different parties and that isn't helped by the fact that it is the LNP and it's one party in Queensland and um, it's different at the state and federal levels and it's separate parties elsewhere. But I I, understanding that seems irrelevant because they've been in government for over 50% of the last however many decades they've been in power. Right, so and Fusion's not in government, that. so it's difficult to understand, I think. Okay, except we're talking about the model of a coalition of parties, then that by itself is feasible and with no other information, no other no other analysis whatsoever, given that they've been in election more than half of the time they've been in existence, suggests it's potentially more viable than being a party by itself. And we can look at all the division between Labor and the Greens to potentially support that theory. If I could say something to this just briefly, um, it seems to me like this is perhaps conflating two separate issues that the party may have. One is an issue of external branding. And yes, the, the word salad when it's presented to voters or and so forth. The other is a question of internal organization. And I think there's perhaps a difference between the members of Fusion understanding where it came from, understanding the uh, branches or the member organizations, as Miles's proposal would have rephrased that. Um, I think there's the difference between the members actually understanding that and the average voter understanding that, given, as you say, Andrea, the average voter really doesn't actually understand a lot of really basic concepts. I mean, a coalition is probably actually a more advanced concept. I think a lot of voters probably uh, fail to understand a lot more simpler concepts than that. Um, frankly, I'm, I'm scared to think how many voters don't actually understand how the uh, preferential voting system works. Uh, I was going to say that, yeah. I mean, we've spent so much time while campaigning on the ground. We, Besides talking about policy, explaining preferential voting. So I think effective campaigning, which is what we should be aiming for, uh, is making sure that we're communicating effectively and that requires very simple, memorable knowledge and information. Yeah. That, and, that's what it's all about. Yeah, and so from that point... Um, I think that we, on the one hand, it's very easy for us to just go, okay, well, our name is just Fusion, and that's the only way we advertise ourselves, and maybe we change the formal name because you know Anthony Green's going to read out the full word salad and make a big deal of it, even though all the documents say Fusion. Um, and then, like in the more in-depth information on the party website and everything, we acknowledge the rich history, we acknowledge the member organisations, and if someone joins just as a member of Fusion or they join through a member organisation, ultimately it doesn't matter 
so much in the long run and but it's really only going to be the people who are joining and are active who kind of need to get engaged on that sort of thing so i wonder how much of the branding side of things in terms of uh simplifying our public image how much of that needs to be in the constitution and how and to what extent can we allow the constitution to be a bit more involved and i think both you saha and andrea and you miles that you both have ultimately the same goal simplify a lot of the structures and you've just approached it from two com different angles yeah i'll just so. add before we go on to the people with their hands up um the point is um and this is something that was introduced as well uh the idea of having the branches be policy work science has had a particular focus pirates have a particular area of focus so we're not dismissing or erasing any identity we want to leverage um that expertise and those resources to go into fusion policy so anyway yeah Adam? just sorry sorry just 10 seconds just speaking to the uh, public branding thing um as far as i'm aware um fusion with aec has its full name and then fusion or fusion party one of those i think it's just fusion is the registered abbreviation so we're allowed to use that on ballot papers that's correct but the, uh, as we've seen Hang on a second liam like... can we go to one of the people with their hands up yeah oh sorry just let liam finish and then we'll do that yeah i'll, I'll... I mean, I was just agreeing with Andrea, you're right, Fusion's the registered abbreviation, but I mean, as we've seen at the last election, they'll still read the whole damn name out and make a deal of it because they, well, the media is the media. It likes to sensationalise, unfortunately. Mm. Okay, thank you. Adam? Yeah, g'day. Thanks, Aha. Um, just a quick question and then a comment. Um, Obviously, with the removal of the branches or from the constitution, it would probably necessitate a name change as we are registered as Fusion Science Secular, Science Pirate Secular Climate Emergency. Is there any other overhead that would be involved in that? And uh, just on a personal point, um, I know it's a word salad, but I think it's a word salad with rich dressing. And I prefer Anthony Green does mention it and make a big deal of it and not mention it at all thanks yeah it was fun <laughs> owen yeah guys in relation to the word salad um remember we had that meeting the the name change meeting um i feel that peter led a you know pretty conclusive process you know everyone had plenty of opportunity for um you know saying what we did and didn't like about the different names and yeah we said that you know sure fusion doesn't mean anything but Owen, uh, you cut out. Oh, you're mute. Yeah, sorry, Owen, you have cut mm -hmm. out. No one can hear you for about the last 45 seconds. Oh, no. Mm. All right, uh, oh, Alex, I'm we're waiting. I'm guessing that's me. Um, so I guess my question is, yeah, pretty vibes based. Um, I also had a specific um, technical question around um, if we formally remove branch recognition, um, what does that mean for pirates? Because currently, right, most pirates are fusion members by the, by the transitive property because pirates are in fusion, but we're not got that database thing linked up yet. So you would, so, so the V2.0 change would break that nexus right um and we would have to ask all of the pirates to separately register in the fusion database so we would give them some sort of note some sort of opt-out um period and then presumptively um cross them over perhaps um so i wanted to check in on that um but i also had a broader question about vibes um so currently you know we're fusion sure the names are describes a process, not a position and all that. Um, but if we stop being about a collective group of smaller groups, um, what makes us different from 
the progressives? What makes us different from the Democrats? Um, what, what's our what's our point of distinction? Um, that that so that's the vibes question. Yeah, yeah. I think the technical yeah. question there, I suppose that would be a question for the pirates. And I'm sorry that wasn't worked out uh, beforehand. That the pirates with their membership database could run that any way that they see fit. I think. Um, do you think there's technical limitations, or is it just um, is that okay? I mean, okay, so there's you know we we can do what we want what you know there, there's various things that we can do depending on you know what sort of motions we can pass at a general meeting um i think we would be able to you know with a with a motion in favor um have some sort of presumption of um we'll do a mass migrate um or but then we've got the problem of some people will absolutely opt out of that um so and we're also going to have two sources of truth problem um, for the for the people who don't. Um, all of this is, you know, not fusion constitutional level, but it is um, something that's going to need to be worked through. Yeah, um, maybe that's um, another so, a point that um, ties in with Adam's yeah. overhead question. There is yeah. there will be work to be done. So I, I think so that might so that's that on its own might be enough of a blocker for me personally. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's all right. Um, I, I, I'm willing to to be in the minority on that. Um, but yeah, I do think we need to all have a think about, you know, and I and I do agree, right? There's substantial practical issues with presenting ourselves as a as a group of groups and non unified stuff and all of that. But that's our that's also our point of distinction. Um, so you know, I'd like everyone to think about you know, if we give up that, then what, are, you know, what's our reason for being? I think that can be part of the origin story. And it's a great point for the origin story that we've come together and um, smaller parties have decided to work together. Um, I don't think that necessarily translates into the need to maintain a formal branch structure. I think we can talk about it. Yeah, so, I mean, did I you want to say something? The Constitution um, amendments are really just to simplify it. So, fusion has been operating as we have been for two years. So, I don't know. I think it's just, it's funny. Liam just really picked it out. We're conflating different issues. And I think the Constitution amendments are really just to clean it and simplify it. Um, it won't be suppressing. Um, the micro parties and their activities because we haven't really asked them to stop doing what they do. I mean, secular is under our brand, but we don't tell them what to do, you know. And same thing with pirates, we don't tell them what to do. So, so I, I, I do believe just a point of clarification there is that the version two changes do change the structure, do propose a change in the structure of the executive committee that so the so that the uh, branch representatives are no longer a thing, right? So that would so that's not just a point of uh, that is true. It removes the privilege of having a voting member on the executive. So I would say that the primarily um, so I think yeah, the point the point of clarification would be that uh, or that, that seems to be the biggest or most important change in in, in their form from, from my eyes. So in terms of what uh, in terms of representation being removed or changed um it's whether or not people understand that dynamic and whether or not it is uh considered fair yeah and uh, i think this is where the uh question of what does the executive do um and what is their role um has been an exploration a part of fusion's teenage years and i think um we've really put too much weight on the executive it's going a little bit too top down and i think that's why it's been really beneficial having our breakout committees like policy engagement and comms because before we were doing everything at that top executive level so removing the branch representatives at the executive level is really just simplifying executive operations because we weren't really being effective with our time at the executive meetings they became debates and things like that but if people want to 
have their branch represented within Fusion, they can do that through a policy committee and our engagement committee and things like that. We don't need them at the executive level because the executive level is really just, um, you know, approving decisions for finances and, and things like that. We don't really want to be top heavy. That's that's my perspective on that. If, so if the executive, for a while. If executive is dysfunctional. That's a product of the culture on the executive. And removing yeah. people from that since won't fix start, that. Since the start, I think um, it hasn't re really been clear what the executive does because before we did have, so this is a bit of history for people who haven't been involved inside, but um, initially we had, um, the availability of two branch representatives to be on the executive um, and quorum at the executive. So we had two branch positions available for all of the five parties. Um, but because uh, have, people have other commitments and this is a volunteer association, which is not the kind of sentiment I agree with. I think if you want to be part of Fusion, no one's holding you to do that. You do that out of your own will. But what I had witnessed in the early days of Fusion is we had too many positions for branch representation on the exec and we required their attendance to reach quorum. And just like this AGM not reaching quorum, it really stagnated the movement and the decision-making process at the exec level. So these, the cleanup of the constitution isn't to suppress people's identities it's to clean up the operations of the exec and just keep it simple. What they're there for is really just to approve um, operational and administrative stuff. If we want to have um, branch representation at the policy level and the comms level, we have committees for that, but we don't need them to be at the executive level where we require their committed attendance for quorum. That was one of the things that really wasn't working well for Fusion in the early days and has settled down a little bit since, but we really needed consistent commitment um, for exec to do what it needs to do. But I think that, since that's then we've been irrelevant. less heavy. We, we fixed that problem with the AGM last year. We adjusted the constitution and made it and um, made people who are inactive, remove them from the need for core, remove them from inactivity. Exactly. So that's yeah. not, that hasn't been a problem for over a year. Simon's had his hand up for quite a long time now, by the way. Sorry, Just... what does that sound? Is Simon's having some mic issues. Okay, anyway, I just wanted to add, yeah, I think, Miles, what you're saying is you're supporting what I'm saying. We simplify these things. No, I'm, I'm saying we fixed that problem 12 months ago. Yeah. Uh, can I speak? Uh, Simon, we cannot hear you over the distortion. We have a, a really bad distortion at your end. It might be quicker, Simon, if you typed that in the chat, just given that distortion. Can you hear me? We can. I think Zoom might pick you up over the distortion. Give it a try. So I just had a message um, that we have been spending quite a bit of time um, on this topic. Um, I think it's really good because this is a constant conversation in the background with Fusion, but I think we have discussed this quite a bit now. So... If you're happy to, we'll park this and we'll move to, on to the um, candidate pitches. We have one hour left. All right. Michael, do you mind moving the slide? All right. So there is a president's statement. Um, I'm happy to say that at the end so we can go through to the candidates. So let's go to the next slide. So committee nominations. So we have two nominations for president. We have Drew Wolfendale. Um, I'll acknowledge that he's from the science branch. Oh, Simon, sorry. Mind if I mute you? Thanks. <clears throat> so for president, we have Drew Wolfendale from science branch and Miles Whitaker from the pirate branch. For convener, we have Owen Miller. Um, secretary, we have Adam Woodings from Pirate Branch and Timo Juntunen from Boat Planet Branch. Treasurer, we have Michael from Science Branch. Registered officer, we have Dylan. Is Dylan online? 
Yeah, okay. He's not online and I'm not sure which branch he's from. Um, and then for dispute resolution officer, we have Dylan again and we have Liam from Pirate Branch. All right. So I know we've got Drew, we've got Miles, Owen, we've got um, Adam and Michael and Liam. Okay, so I don't think we have Timo or Dylan online. All right, great. So are we ready to kick into our pitches? Drew, would you like to speak first? Um, well, let's start with Drew. I am happy to speak first, if that is the preference. Uh, is there a specific time goal that we're trying to uh, aim for here? So we have an hour. We have one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six people. Ten minutes. I should definitely be able to achieve a lot less than that. Can I suggest five minutes speaking and five minutes question time? Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. All right, then. Well, thank you for the uh, opportunity to talk then. Um, as I mentioned in my uh, nomination for this, definitions vary somewhat, but Fusion is now a large organization, which means we cannot afford to keep operating as if we were a small one. Small parties often rally behind a strong leader, someone with an idea, but it's for good reason that Adam Bant stopped doing exec work before running for office. Similarly, Wayne Swan only became Labor's president long after he'd left office. And I'd genuinely be surprised if more than a handful of people here remember John Olson, who is the current president of the Liberal Party. I've said it before and I'll say it again, a large organization needs to operate on a model of facilitation. The executive functions of the party need to serve the needs of the party, not their own. To govern at scale is to impart others with the tools, freedoms, and supports to go out and fulfill those needs while the executive prepares for the next thing. And we've seen the issues that arise with that in this party already when we don't succeed at that. Uh, we've got some people in this party who are great at spinning up energy from nothing and building a campaign on the ground. And in fact, Miles is one of those people. So good, in fact, that those campaigns have in the past outgrown our capacity to support them. Uh, in the Aston by-election, policy could not keep up with demands budget planning could not keep up with needs. The comms process worked, but it struggled. And ultimately, election day coordination was only really organized a day or two before. And this was by no means a disaster. We got a great result. People had a great time. Folks learned a lot. But we saw then that people who should have been planning for what came next were occupied with what was needed in the moment. And when we got to the next part, we were not unprepared, but underprepared. Ultimately, the job of an executive is continuous preparation. Events, comms, campaigns, policy, treasury, member engagement all rely on each other. If any one of these areas of the organization falls over, then like a chain of dominoes, they all eventually come toppling down. The job of the executive is to identify where there is a need and to organize to have that need filled before it brings down something else to look forward while someone else operates in the now. And the simple reality of this is that it takes time to do that. The president might be a leader of a sort, but they're not the party leader. They are at best the chief administrator in a team of administrators or the lead strategist in a team of organizational strategists. And these jobs take time. And more than that, these jobs take creativity and they take patience, they take understanding and they demand an overarching perspective. Event organizing and campaign organizing are high energy, short focus activities with many moving parts. Administering the party is a long focus activity with many moving parts that takes precisely as much energy as you put into it. But event organizing and campaign organizing can be delegated. Nobody can have the responsibility of governing the party organization delegated to them. A president who understood the critical functions of delegation well enough to de delegate that responsibility effectively would not need to do so. The job of the president then is the only one which cannot be effectively delegated, which means there is an essential conflict with campaign and event organizing. Doing these activities will always detract from someone's ability to do what needs to be done as president. Someone who wants to run campaigns should not be president because they'll either never get to do what they want or they'll never get to do the president job justice. 
And that's the context that I bring in uh, my nomination as president. Because I'm not an event organizer. I'm not a campaign organizer. I've done both of those things. And I've guided other people in doing those things effectively. I know what is involved in both, and I can step up to them when necessary. But I don't enjoy either of them. I live and work in organizational process reform and facilitation. It's what I enjoy doing. It's a large part of what I've already been doing for Fusion, and you can rely on it continuing to be what I would do for Fusion going forwards. Almost my whole career has been spent working to harmonize and coordinate disparate organizational processes into a coherent whole, not just by analyzing processes to find the gaps or the issues, but to both design and implement the changes needed to progress things. I've been doing this for a decade now. It's what I do. There are many processes that have been designed for Fusion that still need to be embedded so that they can be proactive instead of reactive. To achieve that, there is a lot of team building we need to do. And I don't mean that in the corporate sense where you get the team in a building and you do silly activities. I mean that in the literal sense of finding people and giving them jobs to build out the team into a larger and more capable group. Six months ago, I identified a minimum of 77 roles to enable us. And at the moment, we consistently have someone fill out about 10 of them. It's time to build our team. And if elected, that's going to be my focus. Thank you. Thank you very much, Drew. Um, so I think what we can do is we'll save questions for after all of the speeches, because I think, you know, we don't want to be interrogating you and then, yeah, all of that. So if anyone has any questions for Drew, please just hold them in and we'll do that at the end. All right. So next we'll have Miles to pitch. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, so my name is Miles. I have been highly active in Fusion since the start and, and prior to the start. And so many of you will know me, some of you may not. Some of you may know me better than others, but I hope that I can provide a, a, a brief snapshot of the person I'm trying to be and I want to be here. And uh, the, the journey that's got me to where I am today has led me to become a polymath, a storyteller and a community organizer. And so I can and have been criticized, like Drew pointed out, for that I do too much. But uh, my personal mantra is something close to the James Bond family motto, which is uh, Orbis non suffit, the world is not enough. And so to give a, a brief list of the things that I've been involved with uh, prior to Fusion, I've been involved with groups such as the Wilderness Society, the Queensland Community Alliance, uh, the Together Union, the Anti-Poverty Network Queensland, Effective Altruism Australia, AI Safety, the Australian Republican Movement, and uh, Extinction Rebellion are some of the main non-electoral groups I've been involved with in advocacy. Um, also the uh, Occupy Movement as well, going back a little bit further. And uh, within Fusion, I've been primarily involved in uh, campaign organizing and volunteer management. And so I was the one of the lead negotiators for the Pirates during the initial Fusion merger negotiations at the end of 2021. Uh, it, I was the Queensland campaign manager in the following federal election. I did, was a primarily volunteer coordinator, but also helped out with marketing, media, and comms in the following Victorian state election and the Aston federal by-election. At, um, uh, at the end of 2022 and at the start of 2023, and then following Aston, I uh, was involved in a whole lot of um, other campaigns or, or activities, such as the member drive in May, um, the AEC member audit um, prior, during, and after that. I also wrote the uh, state branch initiative, the national strategy, and the um, operations plan, which we're trialing at the pro in the moment. Um, I've also uh, done a whole bunch of other small pro uh, projects around the side. Um, one which has been linked in chat is the party stats page, which is about ready to go live. Um, there are some little adjustments I want to make to it, and it's been pointed out to me that there are some issues with it. Um, the party stats page is uh, intended to be a semi-live or regularly updated display of um, making much more open and, and transparent information about the party, such as our member count, our donations, 
and uh, some of our activities as well. So this kind of statistical analysis is something which also I'm quite interested in doing. Um, my background is in uh, software engineering and uh, science in youth work and uh, scientific communication. I currently work as a freelance web developer. I'm also studying physics and uh, to be a teacher at university. And so um, this kind of comes back to the idea of, of being a storyteller that I believe it is the oldest professional practice in in human history it's something that is called the human experience and so telling stories is i think one of the core ideas behind politics as well and not not in a bad sense but rather in a wholesome and uplifting sense that we are telling a story for a better australia that we want and uh working out what that story is and i think we all deep down do know what that story looks and sounds like but that there's some we need to cohere and crystallize what aspects of that look like but as a as a storyteller there's always going to be a little bit of fuzziness there there's always going to be a little bit of um un uncertainty and so my vision for fusion was and uh has always been that we are a, a coalition of parties and individuals that we campaign together but that we respect our differences in individuality and culture and that uh, together that diversity we can weave it into a tapestry which is more vibrant uh, more colorful, uh, more informative, and more beautiful than if we were all the same identical brick. When you mix all the colors together in a blender, you get a kind of brownie sludge. And that's that's not appealing to me. It's not appealing to me to simplify those aesthetic and those cultural aspects. It's not appealing to me to wipe out that individuality. individuality. Our core identity consists of an eight-value framework, um, and, oh, sorry, six value framework, which is freedom, advancement, deep ecology, safety, ethical conduct, and equity. Um, I've argued very strongly. And, and so that was brought together as a combination of the founding branches, developed that based off our the, the philosophies that guided our cultures and communities. I've argued quite strongly that deep ecology is out of place there. And over the next year, that's one of the projects that I want to launch a review process for the values framework to explore that and look at alternatives. I have an extensive argument for why, but the short summary is that deep ecology is a movement which has decades of ideological baggage, which I argue does not align with our movement, but rather that sustainability does. It is more general, less conflicting, and better aligns with us broadly. And so as, as part of this woven tapestry of fusion, some of us have shared identities within fusion, and we formed sub-communities around those shared identities, and some of those predate fusion. And those subcommunities strengthen us as individuals, and the combination of those subcommunities strengthen fusion. Together, we're greater than the sum of our parts. And so it's not just a matter of administrative convenience, but rather something to protect and enshrine that in the constitution to make it unalterable. And there's a very practical need for this vision of fusion, which is that uh, a formal structure which rewards and empowers member organizations is something which... Uh, as Drew has pointed out and others have argued for as well, may be the only thing which would encourage future parties or movements to join us. We fit within the teal set of new left politics within Australia, but we're Very the well. last party to remain like registered. Thank you. Okay, cool. Any Anything else you wanted to add? Just last sentence? Yes, the second half of my sentence was that we are the last remaining registered party in the teal new left politics within Australia. And so I believe that we need to remain open and supportive of uniting these disparate political movements into a mature and broad-based political movement. Thank you. All right. So we'll save questions for at the end. So hold on to those. Next, we have Owen for convener, please. We can't hear you yet. Oh no. Can't hear you. Are you? Maybe uh maybe Owen should turn off his video and he might have more bandwidth. No, uh, oh, you're definitely unmuted. I, it yeah. might be a hardware block. 
Okay. Well, how about while Owen's figuring that out, we move on to um, Adam for secretary. Um, yeah, good day all. Um, I believe most of you know me or know of me. I'm rather active on the Discord. My name's Adam and I've been with the Pirates for a long time, uh, for a while before the merger with Fusion. I'm uh, putting my hand up for secretary because I'd like to um, basically further the um, assistance I can put into Fusion to help us grow and uh, develop as a party. Um, I've been somewhat active within uh, Fusion. I ran for the WA Senate in the 2022 federal election as the second Senate seat. Um, I did some phone banking in WA for that election. Um, I provided some assistance to the Aston by-election. I was on the name change committee um, that was being discussed earlier. And I am also hoping to run a few more WA meetups. Uh, I ran a few last year and I'm hoping to expand that out. Um, the secretary role is... Uh, it's an administrative role, essentially. Um, database management, um, scheduling, paperwork, um, depending on the constitutional changes, may also take over some of the RO um, roles as well. I believe I will be able to uh, fill that role. I do similar roles at work uh, in IT as an IT professional at the moment. Um, I won't go on too long. I've put a, a large amount of words in the, decent amount of words into the um, appointment. So I'll just leave it at that and yeah. Thank you. Great, short and sweet. Thank you, Adam. Okay, um, let's see who we have next. We've got Timo, is Timo online? No, but I'll speak for him. I'm his um, chosen, uh, um, proxy, thank you <laughs> for tonight. Okay, we'll just um, unpin Adam and yeah. <clears throat> okay, um, so Timo was actually nominating as a deputy secretary because uh, he was hoping that um, the there would be a, a motion for deputy positions to come forward. So um, if the, if it came to an election for a secretary. I know he would be happy to stand aside and allow Adam to take that um, that role. And Adam, that was a really great speech. Thank you. And I'm really thrilled you've nominated for that role. And it would be really, really great to have a West Australian executive member. So I'm not sure where that leaves Timo, but um, does anyone have any questions? Thanks, Kemi. About Timo? No? Okay. Excellent. Thank you, Cammy. All right. So, uh, Owen, are you okay now? Let's see, is he back? Uh, he is not back, from what I can see. All right. No worries. Move on. Uh, Treasurer Michael, please. Okay. Spotlight myself, I guess. Um. Why my camera is just constantly so zoomed in. Um, I will keep this relatively mine relatively quick, um, since I'm the only nominee for the position, and I think people generally know me enough or can find out about me pretty well, pretty easily. Um, I've been the treasurer for Fusion and previously Science Party since roughly 2016 2017, so I'm very familiar with the processes and obligations we have with the party and. The AEC and the very uh, and the various state uh, eight, uh, electoral commissions. However, um, I have mentioned in my uh, nomination form as, uh, that I am happy to continue with this role um, for as long as I can. However, I am intending to, uh, for personal reasons, leave the country in early to mid twenty twenty four. Um, so I will likely be stepping down from this position if if I'm reelected, um, but. 
Uh, so this has been sort of typically a role with limited candidates, um, sort of how I became treasurer in the first place. Uh, but I would be doing everything I can to create a smooth handover and uh, be available with everything that I can to sort of make sure that I'm uh, not causing problems there. Um, I think it's still worth zooming in further. Um, and so, um, so yes, I will. Uh, yeah, if there was, if there were any other candidates, um, I would be very supportive for anyone who was willing to join as a deputy that could then potentially take over. Um, however, I will be uh, continuing. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll continue for as long as I am able. Um, but and, and I think anything else is more. Yeah, I'll be open to questions. Thank you, Michael. You've been an excellent treasurer for many years. Um, not going to bias the voting, but yeah. Uh, okay, so next we have Dylan O'Brien for registered officer. Is he here? Dylan, Dylan, nope. Okay, no worries. Uh, now we have Liam Pomfret for dispute resolution officer. Okay, well, just let me take the lens cap off this thing here. I mean, there we go. I mean, I'm probably not going to waffle on all that much either myself i think uh, well I, i've been around long enough that if people don't know me well you can get to know me fairly easily um look I, i've been on the dispute resolution committee for fusion since it was instituted i've uh, been on the dispute resolution committee for the pirates since well what is it now a very long time ago i've lost track um because i'm also on the board of the australian privacy foundation it's meant that i've kind of had to stay a bit on the outer of the party uh there's limits to how much i can get involved uh with the party without uh, potentially compromising uh the apf and its ability to uh actively uh work on its issues so uh being on the dispute resolution committee's kind of worked well with that uh, since i've kind of had to be on the outer of the party it does mean that i can stay a fairly neutral voice uh when being needed to be called in to rule on whatever particular issues um i'm also by the way the returning off of so for this election and usually am for both fusion and the pirates so uh i'll be the one actually counting the votes but not that it's going to matter too much because uh, i note we are uh we've only got two people out of five for dispute resolution committee and uh actually we I, the uh dispute resolution committee nominations uh technically we're not part of the committee so the same rules about nominations for that don't quite apply so uh i saw bryn in the chat earlier said he wanted to apply so that's perfectly fine if there's anyone else who wants to join in uh put in your nominations and we can still accept those but uh yeah uh, i think that may as well be it for me and let people have questions later yeah thank you very much liam all right looks like owen's come back so hey guys um oh, oh good now Yes. Yes. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Um, um, so yeah, um, I'm keen to run for convener. Um, I guess, um, yeah, most members would be familiar. I ran as a candidate uh, for Aston in April. Um, I hope that everybody agrees that, yeah, I stuck to the message pretty well, um, put our best foot forward, you know, what makes us different from the other parties. And yeah, I'm keen to take on more responsibility in a role where I would, you know, be able to speak publicly on behalf of Fusion. I think that absolutely our the number one thing holding us back is just that people don't know about us yet um and i think yeah our efforts towards especially content creation um so hi i quite I, I really like the notion of um you know having a regular podcast um we need yeah we need to get out there and um i guess you guys would have seen i, I made the um the video ad recently for fusion um you know doing all the, the videos and content creation during the aston campaign um yeah i'm keen to keep pursuing it and if you guys endorse me as convener as a spokesperson for the party then um yeah that would be perfect thanks 
like Saha's uh, having a technical problem as well. Oh, oh good. Uh, Michael, do you want to take over? Sorry, I lost context while I was going. <laughs> We want to unpin Liam while we're here. Can we glimpse the um, nominations again, please? It will all. So the full list of nominations are up on the website. I'll put a link in chat. Yeah, I'll just go through them. I mean, I'm the returning officer for this anyway. So uh, for president, we have Drew Wolfendale and Miles Whitaker. For convener, we have Owen. For secretary, we have Adam Woodings. Uh, Timo, I guess we'll, we don't currently have a formal position of deputy. Uh, actually, wait a second. That was for secretary. I might need to double check that constitution. Do we have a formal deputy secretary specified in the constitution currently? I don't believe we do. It does exist as a position, but it's not an elected position. Yeah, okay. So um, I'll take that effectively as Timo withdrawing themselves from the uh, nomination, unless they, I mean, we've got to reschedule anyway, so the vote won't actually happen for a while. But uh, if Timo wants to put forward as actual secretary, they can. Otherwise, uh, they don't need to do that for the deputy at this point. Uh, Michael, who's nominated for treasurer, uh, Dylan, who is not here, I believe. Uh, if you're here, Dylan, please speak up or put in the chat. Uh, Dylan nominated for registered officer and for dispute, and I nominated for dispute. Um, perhaps I might just read out Dylan's registered officer nomination just so it's here on the uh, the record. Uh, so to the question of uh, why are you the most appropriate candidate for the position, uh, Dylan said, I'm a person who enjoys improving projects from the ground up and any contribution I can provide is satisfying to experience watching the outcomes of my efforts. I see no interest in other political parties anymore and look to wholeheartedly dedicate myself to Fusion within the ranks or as a standard member. Uh, how long have you been contributing to Fusion? Uh, they say, unfortunately, I've not had the chance to contribute to the party as I'm new. However, I am confident in supporting the Fusion party in all possible ways I can. Uh, on their education experience and skills. They say, I'm an individual who's worked within the hospitality industry for 10 years. I've mostly worked within hospitals, shopping centers as a supervisor and in management positions. I've experienced in team leading, operations planning and administration work and have decent knowledge of OHS. I'm currently studying part-time or online. Bachelors I've chosen is government and international relations. So to one, hate, one day I have a bureaucratic or diplomatic background. I've been a Muslim revert for eight years, humanitarian world before that. and in regards to their alignment with the party's values, they say, I used to believe in a centrist approach to politics, however, have recently come to understand I'm much more leaning to the left than I thought I was doing, as I'm a humanitarian who believes that every human deserves the basic needs in society. I also believe in uh, techno guyanism and uh, want only the best for the environment with the implementation of such advanced technology. Overall, Fusion's policies are what I wholeheartedly agree with and hope to one day see the party implement them for all citizens to experience. So that was what Dylan had put there in their nominations. You can read uh, those uh, oh. on, yep, Sarah has put the link in. <laughs> yes, thank you for that. And I just had a malfunction with my mouse, so I'm back. Uh, now that we've gone through all of the candidates, burning questions to ask now of our candidates. So do we have any questions? Andrea. Uh, yes, thank you. And actually, I hope this is allowed. I just wanted to speak for 30 seconds uh, in support of Drew as president. I wanted to say that in the several years that I've worked with Drew on the Science Party Executive and the Fusion Party Executive, I've found him to be a clear thinker, clear writer and clear speaker. I found him to be honest with himself and others and strong in administrative skills, which I think is, as Drew mentioned, important for the role of president. And I think he's realistic about the volume of work that he or anyone else can do in a given time frame and seeks advice from relevant people where needed and intelligently connects relevant people for other projects as well. And I found also Drew is pragmatic and a compassionate progressive. And I find his influence makes a team more harmonious and more productive. That's all.
Thank you. Very good. Um, Simon. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can. Yep. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, so just just um, some questions for the candidates and, and a, a few comments. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm sort of like a little bit um, disappointed that these questions of two conflicting constitutions that wasn't resolved by the exec before the AGM, but now that we've we need to redo it anyway. Um, can can I suggest that before the rescheduled AGM takes place, that we have another meeting where we can just focus on that particular topic and, and try and uh, hash things out uh, on yeah, that? I mean, we do need to discuss it. I know Miles ran a um, constitution workshop group, but I think now that we've got people's interest, yeah, we do. It'd be a good idea to have a dedicated discussion on that. Okay, um, great. And um, now, with the actual nominations, uh, it's, so it seems like um, Drew and Miles are both going for the president position, um, and both of them have, have indicated that they have interests in campaigns, and no one has put forward for national campaigns coordinator. So could, could I suggest that the, the two of them could get together and, and, and figure out if one of them could go to national campaigns court and the other one to president, because on, on a technical level, I, I don't see much difference between the two. Because in in the constitution, it, it describes fusion as a as a leaderless organisation. So it, they, they they both come with a position on the on the exec. They both want to be doing things in support of a campaign anyway. So I, I don't I don't really see much difference between a president and a and a campaigns coordinator. Mm, I don't know if we can if, if I might do that address now, that. But... I think you may have misheard me, Simon. Uh, my, my, my thing was cutting out, so very possible. <laughs> yeah, no, I did not express an interest in campaigns in that sense. Well, you, you wanted to build the organisation up to a point that could focus on some, you said something about all these positions you identified that, that we would need or, or yes. something. So that, that, that's, that's all. I mean, the whole the whole point of fusion as a whole is is in support of campaigns. Like that's why we exist is to run campaigns and and get elected one day. So, I mean, it, they're, they're both everything's in support of each other, right? So, I, like, what what do you see as being the fundamental difference um, between the roles? I uh, I did I did describe that in uh, my bit about the duration of focus uh, campaigns focus is necessarily on a fixed and usually relatively short time frame, whereas the key role of the administrative end of the exec is to have that uh, longer continuous future planning angle on things. So so why can't national co campaigns coordinated be in the long term, just as you described? Uh, because then they wouldn't be coordinating campaigns Can you coordinate the development for campaigns? I think that would be a better question for someone who wished to put themselves up as national campaign coordinator. Okay, well, any 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 other comments? Uh, any Miles, would you like to do that, or you're both pretty locked in on president? In my set of constitutional amendments. Um, I have actually uh, rem um, removed the National Campaigns Coordinator position. Uh, the reason for that is, so that's that's the main reason why I didn't run. Um, and there are other reasons as well, but that's the main one. The reason I want, I think it, I want to remember for the committee is that it's not clearly defined and um, it's not clearly defined because uh, it, 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 broadly describes a, um, a a need for strategic development which is something that uh frankly is what what we need to learn and develop as an organization and so with uh with my own nomination for that position like I, I could do it but where i think the future of the party is is a focus on state and local organizing where 
we need to be focusing on developing those local movements and um and and there's there's a fairly strong argument to say that we should uh we should focus on that on movement building and community building rather than campaigning and so hence that's where i've put increasing amounts of my energy over the last 12 months and i'd like to um and that's that i can can support campaigns and run campaigns and do campaigns and also that campaigns are one of the best ways to build our community so those are the two caveats um, so what what I'm thinking is, if um, your proposed V3 isn't even locked in because we're postponing anyway, um, maybe you you'd want to define the national campaigns role to do exactly what you described and keep it, and then you could do campaigns and and Drew could do president because like you're both valuable members of the committee. Like I don't I don't see any reason why there should have to be a conflict here. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't think we can change um, the nominations because the cutoff for nominating for particular roles was um, 24 hours before AGM. And, and so the two candidates for president intentionally wanted to apply for president. Um, yeah. Um, so uh, we, can, we can actually, given that we will need to effectively reschedule the AGM since we didn't hit uh, quorum, we can now actually reopen uh nominations until 24 hours before the date of the rescheduled meeting so okay. it would actually be possible to alter or add new nominations right. I, mean, I mean i just want to check like would you both be happy both being on the committee or is this like intentional that you're both going for the same job i, I can personally say that i am very much looking forward to working with miles over the coming year regardless of what happens yeah, same. Um, I the, the kind of stuff I want to do isn't really focused on the executive committee. Um, I think I have a lot to offer, and that's where uh, a lot of my contributions would make sense. But as I said, I think the focus should be on sort of like medium level organizing to support and empower at a state level and running campaigns as well, which which again isn't necessarily as exact stuff. And so, yeah. All right, thank you. Um, Simon, do you mind if we just move on to Cami now? Go ahead, yep, thank you. Thank you, All right, Cami. I have a question to one of the candidates' um, spiels, uh, but unfortunately this candidate is in absentia and his um, spiel was read out, so I can't really ask him this question, so it probably ends up as a kind of moot question, but I was just wondering, since secular is in our name, why he felt um fit to describe himself in terms of his religion I, I i'm just not sure what the revert is what's a revert is it oh wasn't he saying that he used to be muslim but now he's not anymore oh, that's the impression I okay do you know liam because um i'm just wondering if, if, if a revert means you go back to a religion or it means you're no longer a convert do you know um I, I mean, I think that understanding is someone who has returned to the to religion, but also um, secularism does not mean you can't be religious. Secularism means that you are you don't want your religion to be imposed on the government and society at large. Yeah, so a Muslim revert is someone who left Islam then returned to Islam. But yes, as you say, it's being religious does not necessarily imply that you don't also respect secular values okay thank you thank you cami uh miles got some questions i wanted to uh speak up and support a number of uh every single i've worked with every single one of these nominees here except for dylan and i would uh, I'm just double checking, I believe. So yes, I would support all of them for the positions, including Drew for president. I'd be quite happy with President Drew. Um, I think it, at, uh, uh, at at various points, I've been encouraging people to run on the spirit of friendly competition, and uh, and and to promote a a sharing of ideas and and different different ways forward. Um, Drew is a very good facilitator and very methodical and quite good at that uh, uh, longer term step-by-step -step planning. And so we've worked together on the 
operations plan and the state branch initiative and the national strategy work quite closely on that. Uh, and so I think that'd be good. I want to speak also for Adam as secretary. Um, I mean, he, he's been doing great work with Fusion and the Pirates as well. Um, he was quite new to the Pirates when Fusion happened, and he's quite wholeheartedly, enthusiastically jumped into supporting both the Pirates and Fusion, which is, I think, a really good model for how we as branches can empower the party. Um, he's hard worker. He's a good speaker. He commits to the things he can do, and then he does the things he can do, and he could do anything. Um, he's just that kind of person. <laughs> uh, also, um, for uh, the other candidates, I should probably also mention um, Owen has been an amazing and incredibly unique electoral candidate to work with. And I'm very excited to see his journey as he's developed and grown in politics as part of a larger party and organization. And so... Um, that's been a real journey to witness that I've been alongside and, and been part of. And I'm excited to see where in future that goes as well. I think um, I align very closely with Owen's politics, um, particularly around transhumanism and open source. I don't talk about my personal politics much and I have a preference not to, but I can and I will on occasion very enthusiastically, um, particularly on open source as a web developer. Um other nominations I should mention. Um, I remember uh, Timo I haven't worked closely with. I'd be very keen to have him on the executive and support him. He was one of our candidates for West Australia in the federal election. I believe he worked with Adam, correct me if I'm wrong, and um, a really interesting guy. And I'm really, really hoping we can work more closely with him, particularly around some of the sub-communities he's worked with. Uh, Michael is treasurer. Very excited to see him come back. Oh, Adam's corrected me. That was Tim, not Timo. Tim, Tim Viljean. Okay, right. My mistake. Uh, so, but um, but I would have seen Timo on some committees. Unfortunately, not work closely with him. Uh, Michael has done a very, very good job as treasurer. Dot all the I's and cross the T's. Um, there's there's a, a saying in some club orgs that the treasurer is the role with the least responsibility. Oh, sorry, the least the least things to do but the most power, which is kind of an awkward thing where there's a the smallest responsibility to the treasurer, but they're very, very, very important and very precise. Michael's done all those pretty well. And um, as, as a sort of IT or rounder admin engineer, um, he's also been really, really helpful at connecting a few of the backend systems, um, doing a few technical projects, which has been really great to have that sort of support. Uh, I'd also, uh, I also yeah. want to, as a last one to support Liam, um, he, I really want to see him doing policy work. I'd love to see him doing policy work. And given that he's now had his PhD, he can't use, he has now had his PhD for a little while. He can't use that as an excuse not to write policy for us anymore, but I would be more than happy just to see him maintain his membership and come along to events and be part of the community. If that's all he wants to do. Nice. Thank you, Miles. All right. Owen. Uh, thanks, Miles, for the endorsement. Um, my question was um, mainly for yeah, you, Miles, and Drew as president. Um, I guess like you've both talked about facilitating fusion. Um, I see the main limitation as like our enthusiasm, getting people to actually do things, getting people excited. So the question for both of you is like, how would you, how would you enable that to happen, and do you see it as part of your job description anyway? Question for the presidents. Uh, Drew, would you like to go first? I suppose I can do. Um, you, you broke up just a tiny bit on my end, so um, oh, let me just. Yeah, like how would you get people excited? Like besides facilitating it, how would you actually get them to want to do anything? And is that part of your job? Um, so, to a certain degree, um, people have to already be a little bit invested in the community before you ask them to do something. Um, but generally speaking, uh, with my experience in 
a variety of volunteer environments, you you really encourage people who are uncertain if they're going to do something or if they want to do much by really identifying specifically which uh, responsibilities align with their interests and their abilities, and then essentially empowering them to take the lead on that responsibility. Um, it's a conversation that you have to have. It's a very, uh, particularly when you're quite low on the number of people involved, it's a very interpersonal conversation to set up. And that's essentially, yes, it is part of the president's job to have that conversation. Um, it's part of member engagement as well. If you've uh, got lower, lower level things that you can uh, delegate, but ultimately, yes, it's, it's part of any administrator's position to understand what it is that uh, they can ask a member to do responsibly and uh, empower them to do it with as much freedom and uh, capacity as possible. So Drew and I have put together a very methodical process for doing exactly that, for <laughs> formalizing the process of getting people excited and doing stuff. Um, there was quite a lot of theory that went into that. There's some research, there's psychology and all that. Uh, Drew pretty much summarized it. So that's the that's the 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 technical and the formal answer. Um, the the vibes based answer is that uh, we've we we've talked about the concept of a weird budget in our policy in in pirates we've talked about it um and and we've kind of sort of brought that understanding to fusion as well that we have a certain weird budget which is let's say like 10 percent of our policy or 20 percent of our policy can be like really different outside the like way outside the mainstream and if we go and this is it's a hypothetical to say and if we go over 20 percent, then then we start to look more fringe so it's a careful balance of a small amount of weird and a lot amount of sensible and good and uh, sprinkling in just the right amount of that exciting, that little bit of weird can be really exciting. And, and, and putting in something that's a little bit unconventional, a little bit different. And that's always been a part of, of, of pirate strategy that we are a bit anti-political. We're not conventional or we weren't conventional when we campaigned and we're not conventional now in our politics and our organizing. And, uh, and that's been a great way to grab attention, to get people to talk about it, even within fusion. When we say pirates part of fusion people are like oh what are the pirates right and, and that's what it interests them and attracts them to fusion and so that's a, a beautiful little sort of psychological um uh, aspect we can build into our campaigning to not just be not just be boring not just be ordinary not just be everyday um, but all our organizing our community have that little bit of a little bit of uniqueness that little bit of, uh, of difference and um and it, it can't just be any one person or any one group there has to be different people bringing forward that little bit of weirdness that little bit of uniqueness and, and distinctiveness and we have to be able to identify that cherish that support that and and nourish that as well great all right so we have five minutes left of the meeting any other questions before we wrap this up and i think i'll save my president's statement for the next meeting so that's better suited then because um, this is important to ask those questions, but then we'll also have another uh, chance in the next meeting too. So if any questions come up between now and then, we can also ask them there. All right, five minutes left. Anything left to suggest before we wrap up? Um, I, I guess the date for the next meeting will be uh, organized by the executive committee and they'll notify everyone yeah i mean i think now i could just suggest it will be on the 12th we'll just keep it to a sunday uh, that gives us enough time to organize what we need to do i mean i wondered if you might want to put it off till the 19th if only to give uh the possibility of like having a bit of extra time to maybe arrange that meeting if uh you, Andrea and Miles, wanted to get together and discuss the uh, the constitutional stuff first. Okay, that might be a suggestion. So next Sunday we can have a meeting for everyone to chat. Does that sound good, Simon? Just initially as a suggestion. Yes, absolutely, love it. Cool. Sunday afternoon next week we'll have a meet up again and just hash out the proposed amendments because it's a big deal. Uh, and then, yeah, 19th, we'll do the AGM again. 
True. Um, I might be able to make that. I hope I can. Um, it is probably worth noting as a uh, well, two things here. One, one, it's probably worth noting as a point of order that uh, we can't put forward an alternative version of those at this point in time. Uh, there's simply not sufficient notice uh, as a specified requirement to do so. Um, so the meeting for hashing out those constitutional changes is going to just have to be a matter of uh, getting people settled on whether or not one or the other is acceptable. Um, yeah, yeah, we, we can't we change them. We're not changing, no. Yeah, just just as a point of clarity. Um, as a second point of clarity, uh, well, not a second point of clarity, a second point uh, that I think is worth speaking on uh, while we're here, um, I personally can't genuinely stand behind either of them uh, in support, um, but I would say that version three, while it does introduce some higher levels of administrative burden on us in the lead up to an election is tolerable. That's just my position on it to be said. Mm -hmm. That's all. So as we saw Drew on display, points of order, very good at that admin kind of thing. It it should um, actually wow. um it should actually reduce the pre camp the pre election admin because I cut out a whole section of pre selection. You did, however, uh You've also cut out the option to not have a vote on something in a later it's section. Pre-selection. Yeah. Okay, we'll discuss that at the meeting on Sunday. Um, anything else? Uh, I'm just having a quick check of the Constitution in regards to Drew's point about like how we wouldn't be able to change the uh, the motion. Um, I'm just trying to see, like, how much notice do we actually have to give? And... 21 days for a special resolution. And I can't imagine that changes in the event of rescheduling. Yeah. So the only option, if we wanted to change, would be to propose new versions today, which, I mean, there's the corrected what I consider the corrected version and the one that reflects reality, which was a step before version 2.0. Um, the only option to propose that would be to postpone for three weeks. I, I still don't know if that's constitutional. Uh, it would be uh, if it's 21 days from today. The problem is that you would need to have the new one ready today. Oh, it's ready to go. It's the basis for 2.0 before any branch structural changes were made. Uh, so like a 1.5? Yeah, let's call it that. So it's Something things like, like cor make, making actual corrections and removing things like the association may have a common seal, which really we don't need to have in there. Uh, well, if we wanted to do that, you would need to send out the note notification of the rescheduled date today and that with that new proposal and the rescheduled date would have to be the 26th. Yeah, and uncomfortable either way, you know, I don't really mind. I think what we can do is um, we'll have the discussion next Sunday to really clarify it. And I think if we come to the AGM and it's just thrown out, so both of them fail, then we can just do this in a special general meeting. Like, there's no need to rush it, but I think there hasn't been too much interest uh, or too much discussion in these constitutional amendments. Um, so now that there is interest, we can really get into the weeds about them. Miles, Miles do you have a question? Um, I was, um, I wouldn't mind taking a couple of minutes to show off the party stats page, um, which I've been All working right. on, has been linked a couple of times, and to quickly talk through a few points. Uh, and then after that, um, I do have an offer to speak from uh, our Melbourne councillor, and I'm hoping she'll come on in the next few minutes. She's currently in. Uh, she's currently watching a game for her local football club, which she's a big supporter of. So I'm hoping uh, she'll be able to come on soon. Uh, can I make one quick point about the constitutional stuff then? Uh, before that, Miles. Sure. Um, so I will just say the I think it's version 1.3 technically um, of the other one that went around. While it is lesser 
obviously, uh, than the current proposal put forward and doesn't get to everything that it probably needs to at some point. Uh, it is something that I would consider uncontroversial and would support. Um, and so if we were to put that out uh, as a notification today, I wouldn't object to it. Carry on, Miles. Thank well, you. should we have a look at 1.3 then? I have a quick look at that. Or, or maybe, yeah, maybe take time to do that then. And perhaps that should be done after this meeting by the people who are most focused on the constitutional side of things. But certainly if there's something that's uncontroversial, that it's like these are the, the changes that we all absolutely agree need to be made, uh, being able to pass that in the AGM uh, this year without having to wait for an SGM later would be ideal. And then we can have the SGM when the more uh, complex uh, changes are actually put forward. Well, okay, I think with respect to time and everyone else's time and interest, uh, it is past six. Um, do you have an update on your speaker, Miles? I don't think we have too much of an idea of what you wanted to prepare and how long that would take. And we're past six, so I don't know if anyone's really that interested. Well, we'll see uh, if... Uh, if she gets my message and hopefully she'll be able to come on in the next few minutes, as I've said. But um, in the meantime, I did also want to present the party stats page, which has um, I've been working on for a little while. So would that be okay if I spend a few minutes doing that? I guess we'll ask the audience. Do you want to just link this... it in the chat? Yes. Yeah. Um, Miles, is this really an AGM sort of thing? Uh, it's related to party strategy, yeah. Yeah, we had a general yeah, business strategy section, but yeah, I'm aware that it's past six. So if people don't want to stay, feel free. But if you want to look, feel free to stay. Yeah, great. So uh, so th there's the web page, and I'll do a little share. Uh, so the main idea is that it tracks national members, members by state, and uh, donations and a few little bit of bits of other information around there as well and so the uh, at the moment it's uh, it's static um, so the data is all i've done manual exports of the data from nation builder and then hard coded it in and so this can be updated on a monthly basis relatively easily uh, but longer term i want to get this automated to an automated process and so i've been talking to michael morosky about that to get um to get donation stats exported from zero but also have uh api access for the member numbers so that's uh an emerging or, or ongoing conversation we're having and it's not um it's it, it's pretty rough and uh another thing which is pointed out as well is there is actually some mistakes in this um, some mistakes in the data. And so in May and June of 2022, during the federal election, we um, those figures are definitely wrong because we didn't break. We only broke 10,000 in donations for one month. Um, so that's an example. But uh, one thing I want to add is a few little notes next to each of these graphs, adding explainers for certain spikes or points. So for example, the period March to July 2022 was the federal election, which is the reason for that spike. And then I believe uh, July is uh, financial year or getting close to end of financial year. And so that's that donation spike. I think that's what we said. And having those little tips and explainers. And so seeing this is um, is a way to encourage people to think about more what, what the party runs on, the basic resources. And so it's important not to track um, any one single metric and then focus on that because um, there's an issue of uh, um, uh, con um, instrumental convergence onto the wrong outcome by by focusing too much on the wrong metric. We get kind of a negative emergent behavior. Uh, and so that can actually cause a whole bunch of issues. But by having a broad set of metrics, including these ones, which is state members and national members and, and donors, as well as other metrics as well, which I'm hoping to be able to gather, then by making these available, people can actually see them and start thinking about them more. And so, for example, we've had conversations around state-based members for the purpose of state registration. I've had a lot of those conversations over the last year. And with this really nice graph, you can see those state members. 
and you can be like, oh, okay, cool. So Victoria and New South Wales are pretty much equal in numbers and they're both really, really strong. And you can sort of then compare that in your head to what the numbers are for um, the registration requirements, state registrations, so you get an idea of how likely that is to succeed. And so, for example, uh, in, in the ACT, uh, we have about 150 members, but the requirement for registration is 100. So we've exceeded that. But um, as a point I made on Discord, we don't really have any active organizers or candidates or campaigners there. And so it's a it, we, we, we have this sort of inf open source information that um, that here's, here's sort of where our numbers are based and what our potential is. But um, it, it gives us guidance on what we can do with that potential, and what we can't. We can't just sort of go and register straight away. We need to have local organizers to actually spearhead that effort and organize local activity. So similarly in Victoria and New South Wales as well, in Victoria, the threshold is 500 and we have strong organizers and candidates. And um, and we came close to registration, unfortunately fell short. Um, but that's really strong. And, and so, so you might like to think that New South Wales would be the same kind of effort. They've got a bit more than 500. There's organizers and candidates there and a strong presence. But New South Wales is actually a 750 member requirement. So the barrier is much, much higher, which means that you can be like, okay, well, Victoria is a close thing, but New South Wales, it's actually not such a close thing. Um, I'd love to take requests or offers for help for this. Uh, anyone who has requests for information to display or ways to display it, please let me know um, or ask a question. Or anyone who wants to actually... Um, who, who who does have some technical skills, particularly web development um, or, or any kind of those related suites, suite of, uh, suite of uh, experience, please get in touch. Uh, and so we can look at ways to automate this. Um, if if we can't automate it or in, in the time that, meantime that we don't automate it, then uh, we can update it manually in the meantime. And so that's that can essentially just be done in a fairly straightforward manner using Nation Builder. And so that could be a role for treasurer and secretary in the future. Um, but I guess one other um, one other sort of motivation for me to do this is to, um, with this kind of sort of decentralization of information, it's more transparent, but it's also a way that we can, um, one of my motivations was to actually make the party stats section of the um, the monthly member meetings to be redundant because we can just sort of pull these up and share them and promote them. People go, like, oh, okay, we can go check it out ourselves. And um, maybe we could have sort of strategy section instead of the triple M or, or replace it with something else rather than just having this focus on the kind of numbers and admin and statistical overhead. So does anyone have any uh, questions or comments or thoughts about that? Cool. Thank you, Miles. All right. Well, uh, in the interest of time and as chair needing to close the meeting, happy to close the meeting now. If anyone wants to talk after the meeting about the constitutional platform. Cool. All right. I'll close the meeting so now I can leave. Um, but feel free to stick around and chat and we'll just stop the recording now. Yeah, I'm happy to stick around for a bit. Uh, Miles, you have to stop the recording. I'm just looking for the button.